Greetings, Dr. Jeffrey Scott here, and this is my weekend market update for July 9th, 2023. Actually, that's Sunday. I'm doing this on Saturday the 8th, but same weekend. I title it, Will Stalling Markets and Higher Rates Lead to the Next Leg Down? My email address is hgsidoc at gmail.com. I welcome comments, positive and even negative, if they're constructive. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe, hit the alert. I publish these every weekend, but my timing depends on the rest of my life. So by getting the, uh, hitting the alarm, you'll get notification when I publish them. And let's get started. Oh yeah, if you like these, please hit the up thumb. If you don't, the down thumb. The more times people hit those, the more likely YouTube will share this with people outside of my small distribution list. Disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Anything I recommend is in the spirit of education and not investment advice. I am a doctor, not a broker. I am independent. Any tools that I use, I've paid for. I don't work for any other third parties. I'm not paid for by any trading company, software platform, etc. And trading involves risk, and you alone are solely responsible for any investment decisions you make. Well, it's not 29 days, it's two days. Can't wait to Monday for the Wealth 365 event, especially since there's a host of new speakers, especially looking forward to hearing my good friend John Person. Um, I am speaking Thursday at 6 p.m. and Friday at 4 p.m. If you're not registered yet, what are you waiting for? Go down to the remarks on my YouTube site and click the link and you can register for free. If you like these videos, um, I do short ones Monday through Friday at stocksanddocs.com. Um, I will miss them occasionally when I'm on the road. Um, but um, I really enjoy doing them. I cut to the chase and do them in five to ten minutes. Major markets tell the story. Now, I don't normally pop this thing up in the middle to clutter things up. But I put the uh, thing in the middle because it was a four-day week. And most of my programs look back five days to find the weekly. Um, so basically... If we see what the market did this past four days, you could see all the majors accused Diamond, Spiders, and Russell were down. You could see from the close on the prior week, the big loser was the IWM down 1.4%. The open is from the when they opened the week on Monday morning for the short session. So was that a big down week? Absolutely not. And frankly, underneath the indexes, the markets were not that, were actually a lot less down than I expected to see based upon some of the action on Friday. If we look at the major indices here, and you look at Friday, you could see the major indices are down. Um, the NYC was actually up 0.20 on Friday, and the Russell, the broad-based Russell, was up 1.1%. So frankly, if you take away that 1.1%, 1 1 the Russell really was down the most on the week, but recovered much of it going into the weekend. Interestingly, we're still in a bull market on spiders, NASDAQ, and the Qs. We came out of it on the diamond and the NYSE, but look how close they are. This is off the October 13th low, and the Russell's down, excuse me, is up 13.7%. So in, in spite of everybody talking doom and gloom and how the bear market is not over yet, you can make money in bear market rallies or new bull runs, and sometimes you don't know until hindsight what you're in. The S&P sectors just show you the big moves off the lows on everything except healthcare has been a laggard, as has um, utilities, two of the more defensive um, uh, sectors in the market. If we look at um, the Q Edge tool just to get a sense of what Friday looked like, now, the S&P sectors on the week were all down except for real estate. 
Q is looking not at the S&P 500, but rather looking at the S&P 1500. So they're going to be a little different. You can see in the S&P 15 on Friday, the only thing that was negative was utilities, a defensive thing. So despite the indices being down, the sectors look good. If you look at the buckets, the distribution of stocks in the S&P 15 above and below their midline actually went up from Thursday to Friday, showing that it's not a horribly weak market. If you look at the distribution of those buckets, we'll talk about those again with the Edge Raider slide, um, a very balanced looking market. If we look at over five days, you could see mostly red, 73% of the sectors down, 54% of the industries, 57% of the stocks. But when you look out over two weeks and a month, you could see the market's been much stronger. So is this just a little pause with some rotation to refresh, or are we actually seeing the market starting to roll over? Time will tell. Now, this is from Nick Drendel. Here's his email address. It's a very inexpensive um, spreadsheet tool it doesn't require any extra data you can put in your trades obviously you can see up here I have not but it gives you the chance to, to see things during the market day so the first thing is you could see that small cap growth actually finished in the middle of their range but most of the indices the Q's, the spiders the diamonds sold off at the end and we'll show you that finishing near the bottom of their range when you look at compared to moving averages, everything is still above the 50 and above the 200. But notice how they sunk below the 8 and their slope on the 8 EMA is actually headed down. So that's a little bit of a breakdown of the structure that you want to see. Over here, you can see, again, despite negative indices on a one-day performance. And again, remember, the NYSE and Russell are much bigger than the 30 stocks in the Dow or the 500 stocks in the S&P, you can see some strength in certain industries. And if you look at even over five days, China, clean energy, think solar, which is um, actually a little bit lower here, but up here are doing well. Oil, gas, exploration and production, energy as a whole, um, also doing well. This is not everything. This is a nice list of industry groups. I'd love to add more if that was possible. Um, but it does give you a sense of what's going on in the market. Now, I think the uh, Achilles heel is rates and the Fed. And you could see you know, a couple things to show you. White is the rates. The left is the 10-year. The right is the 30-year. And notice that as rates go up to a certain point, the markets go up with them. So rising rates does not mean the market is going to tank. But rising rates ultimately can get to a point that they hurt the market or the rates go straight up is bad for the market. So we picked up on the 10 year. We picked up on the 30 year, stuttered a little bit on yellow on the spiders, but really didn't lose much on the um, on the markets. Is there a recession in the near future? There was a lot of talk about that this week. And I think JP Morgan came out and said, later in the uh, year, um, perhaps. Now, the argument for is each time the 10-2 and the 10-3 yield inverts gets below the zero line, meaning the short-term rates are actually higher than the long-term rates, um, you expect a recession. And it's when the rates correct and go back above the yield curve or the yield inversion line that that recession occurs, the recession being the great bars. So both the 10-2 and the 10-3 are deeply inverted, and that is you know, a pretty predictable signal for a recession. Now, we don't know when it's going to come, and it, there's no rule that says the markets can't go up further until it comes. So I look here at the credit tightness, and you could see that credit tightness is not a problem, and that's something that does occur with recession. So that's a tip off that we don't see. And if I look at the Philadelphia Fed diffusion index, every time it's dropped below negative 0.2, it's had a recession either during or after. Well, we dropped below negative 0.2 and now we're improved beyond that. So the question is, is that a positive or a negative sign? 
So I do think it's still a question. I don't want to sound like I know for sure, because who would know? I mean, remember, everything we look at on a stock chart, every indicator, none of them are a crystal ball. There's no genie in a lamp that I'm going to rub on that's going to tell me what's going to go. You have to look at a constellation of signals and try and give yourself an edge. And you could be right, you could be wrong, but we're all looking at the same price and volume and trying to figure out what's going to happen. These are pretty cool because, as you could see, they go back 30, 40 years, and they've been pretty good predictors. But, you know, things don't always occur exactly as they did before. And why does this matter? Because typically in a recession, bear markets can get much lower, and that would be a bad thing for our markets. Breath, no surprise, you could see. Just a little turn down on the stocks above the 200, stocks above the 40. And boy, this thing is like money. Um, every time this T2121, which is a 13-week new high, new low ratio, gets anywhere close to this white line, the market's extended and you get a short-term snapback. Well, we did it again. Now, it only is meaningful at extremes. And there's extremes where it always turns down and then there's periods of time before that. So I monitor this, and I know when I'm getting towards that extreme. Well, we're off the extreme. When we're getting to this point where the number of new highs versus new lows is a preponderance of new lows, we also snap back and we go higher. Right now, we're back off a risk, and we're more neutral as the breath eased a bit. Here's those buckets and edge rater. We already talked about the right-hand pie slices, which are the stocks above or below the midline of the S&P 1500 neutral. Um, notice the number of stocks above or below the bands. When you see these start to get to 20 or 30 percent, you've got an inevitable reversal coming. And it just gives you a sense, uh, are we more bullish or bearish? And I'd say we're neutral to slightly bullish on the buckets. The Hindenburg omens fire at times where markets are at risk of rolling over. The first signal is interesting, but you need a second signal within 30 days to confirm it. If you see a Hindenburg omen, then you probably ought to be concerned about the markets. Um, if you look back, and I've showed it before in 2021, late in the year, we started to see Hindenburg omens firing on the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ is not the traditional market that we look for for the Hindenburg omen. Typically, we look for it on the NYSE. But the makeup is so different with the NASDAQ being tech heavy and not a lot of banks and energy that I think it's valid to look at on both. Well, you could see we had a couple of them fire within the last few weeks on the NASDAQ. So that's one reason to be a little bit concerned, in my opinion. Now, on the NYSC and on the NASDAQ, you know, the number of new highs has dropped the last couple of days. And the number of new lows, certainly on the NYC, they don't have any, or very few. And it's actually improved from where it was on the um, NASDAQ. That's a positive. On Thursday, which was a, also a down day in the market, we had a uh, what, what I consider to be a very rare, strong Phoenix signal on the NYC. And the Phoenix signal is another one of these internals that we use, taught to us by Ian Woodward 20 plus years ago. And when you see a Phoenix, especially in an uptrend, it should tell you to be concerned about the market, that the market is at risk of rolling over. Um, it doesn't tell you anything you don't know already, but it's another edge. So the Phoenix, a couple of Hindenburgs, it's enough to have me more concerned. Now, the indices were down on the week, except for the broader ones. And you could see, if you look at ERG, EPS rank plus relative strength rank plus group rank, and you look at ERG of stocks versus their return, you can see the majority of stocks were above zero, and but most of the above zero was in the junk. And in fact, if you look at relative strength, stocks with the worst relative strength outperform. Market rotation into laggards, junk off the bottom, whatever it is, it's not leaders. Now, this week is a, a massive week in news. On the left, you could see that just at the time that I went to market watch and chat and took this down there are six fed speakers on the week 
You can also see we got a little bit of things that matter, CPIs, PPIs, beige book, consumer sentiment, and the like. So there is a lot of things going to happen this week that could move the market. So something to be, again, concerned about um, doesn't mean the market's going down. And as we saw this week, one day, I think Thursday, the ADP suggests that the employment's going to be hot and the market sells off hard. And then the next day, employment, monthly unemployment report comes out or monthly employment, and it wasn't hot and the market recovered some, at least early. So these things are major moving events. The other thing to know about is um, earning season starts. Whenever I see Delta and JP Morgan, Citibank, Wells Fargo, I know that the next quarterly earnings barrage is beginning. So this week is easy. Next week will be a little bit more. Um, and then we'll get into the massive three or four weeks where you need to know what's going on. As I have quoted for 20 years, it's a judgment call to hold stocks over earnings dates. It's bad judgment to not know when your stock's earnings date is scheduled. I love earningswhispers.com and earningswhispers.com. I am able to um, go there and, and get this chart. But, you know, there are other programs and such in the market that you can use to help you with earnings. Another thing that I found is very useful within TradeStation, um, there is a free indicator and it gives you next earnings date. Well, obviously on a, let's just put up, um, it will give you the, when the next earnings date is scheduled and what time. And so if you plot that on your charts, and I assume you would review your charts each night, that's a great tool to tell you in advance. Because if you don't know when your earnings date is scheduled, it's a binary event. You might be really happy and say, whew, I'm glad I didn't know. But it's better to know and to act. Thoughts. Markets eased on a holiday shortened week. Big cap tech underperformance. Showed you that. Lots of catalysts. I think China remains interesting, both from a trade war perspective on chips, retaliation threats on rare metals that are needed for batteries and chips. Head fake on employment. Strong ISM, hawkish Fed tone. We'll probably hear more of that this week. You know, the market's priced in cuts, and the Fed is pricing or talking up rate hikes. And that's not good for the markets. Most S&P sectors were down on the week with only XLRE showing a gain, but on a broader base market, most of the sectors were up. Just tells you the larger cap-weighted stocks led to the downside. Um, heavy on potential market drivers this week. I showed you Fed speakers, data, and earnings. So markets have stalled. If you look at the last four weeks, the markets haven't done much. My timing system still says okay to be long, but my conviction is lower. I had stops hit midweek and on Thursday, which reduced my long exposure and raised cash. That's why you have stops. Hopefully, we're seeing rotation rather than the beginning of a larger pullback. I did notice that oil services companies really stood out on my large chart review. And Bitcoin seems to have woken up. You know, the problem with Bitcoin is, you know, you've got a lot of uh, potential regulatory risk or opportunity. And I never like exogenous events that I can't predict. But Bitcoin, when it moves, some of these miners, especially the small ones and the big ones like MicroStrategy, will really um, have a great move. Again, would love to see you this week. I'll be on Thursday 6, Friday at 4. And so that concludes the initial part of my presentation where I look at the market. And now what I like to do is I like to actually go into the charts. And I like to start and go through um, with, with wealth charts. Uh, I use a lot of programs. You saw TradeStation where I had, can duplicate a lot of this. Um, TradingView is another platform where I can do a lot of this. Um, each program has its advantages. Um, HGSI is still, it, it has always been a great program. Um, if you liked Ian's stuff, as well as the industry group and sector rotation. 
But if I'm looking for a platform that has live data, that has some of the best scanning tools in the marketplace and charting tools, and is easy to learn and has a lot of built-in support, um, that's why I do wealth charts on these programs because it really has some wonderful things. In fact, in Wealth Charts TV, um, I'll have it on, and you can not only do they have all kinds of tutorials to help you with the program, um, there are training courses by uh, my friend Keith, for example, is in here somewhere. Um, and then there's Dr. Wade, and lots of other folks will do programs. If you are a summit, um, if you own wealth charts, you get the summit recordings and they're posted almost immediately. And then during the day, there's multiple live um, training um, speakers. So this is a really unique program in my mind, and that's why I use it. And if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend that you do. And yes, I do have multiple programs, and I think that you'll find that sometimes there's value to that but you better have wealth charts. If we look at, um, and oh, by the way, I pay for wealth charts, and I don't get anything if you have wealth charts. I just think it really today is the best program encompassing for everything in the market with ease of use, which is critical. So here's the open on Friday. So the market opened, and this is on the spiders, and traded higher at the open. And then sometime around 1.30, the markets got nervous. And you could see my EMS signal, um, which is one of my marketplace indicators and one that when I traded futures intraday that I used um, when I was on non-compete years and therefore at home to trade futures during the day. And you could see the sell-off not quite straight down, but pretty close into the close. Now, that is bothersome. Um, was that just fear going into the long weekend? Was it concern about the Fed speakers that will hit early in the week? Um, Do somebody know something we don't know? Was it just people being cautious? I don't know. But I think what, you have to be concerned on how the market closed on the week. So the S&P, as you could see here, has pretty much a shooting star with a really long talking, topping tail. This tells me it opened and it closed at the same place. So it opened yeah, it opened, that's the opening print and look at the closing print, it's at the same place. So you get a doji signal and then it traded higher the entire day and closed at the open so you get the shooting start. Not a bullish candle. That is bothersome. Um, and you know, we'll see if it can hold this breakout here. But would it, do I expect it to, to fall back down to the October lows? No. But would I be surprised if um, we did a little bit of this and then traded down and retested on this line here, the 420, that would not surprise me. That's only four, four and a half percent away. Certainly would not be considered a significant, horrible move. So I think we have some short term risk in the markets. I think the spider is one of them. The Q's, you know, the Q's not quite as bad. The spiders were down just a quarter percent. It's just the shape of the candle that worries me. This was down 0.33, similar location above the breakout point, topping tails. The diamond's a little bit more bothersome. Um, you know, I've been looking at this as a trading range, which they would be nice to see them break above. We broke down below the point here on the flag that I had written for my breakout, failed to get above it sitting right on the 50. So the good news is it's at a decent bounce area. But the bad news is it's failed this breakout and does it come down and retest this thick yellow line, which is the uh, anchored VWAP from the 2022 highs. The other thing that I thought was in a trading range is the, the IWM, and it continues to, to struggle to get above that anchored VWAP off the 2022 highs for the Russell. 
you can see that th what's different here is you got a blue candle instead of the up 1% on Friday compared to the red candles. You know, you'd expect the VIX to be giving you, you know, it's all over signals, and it's not. The VIX did trade up, up into its 50 period moving average, and then even though it traded higher on Friday, it closed down 3.95%. And the other thing that weakened, and I guess it weakened because of the employment report, was the dollar. Dollar has been in a trading range stuck between the 200 and the 50. This may be enough to propel it lower. If we look at commodities, the dollar was weak. You'd expect gold to be up. It was up 0.75%, but not a very convincing candle. Silver was up after bouncing and holding at the 200, up 1.69. Probably the most impressive was oil up 2.19%. The question is, can oil get above this 200? Now, OPEC is helping because well, helping the price is not helping us by um, having multiple comments about cutting output, the Saudis supporting that. And it did have a bit of a hammer the prior day. Still got to get above that 200 for me to be a believer. If I look at natural gas, it's above its 50, but it's really struggling here. Nothing has changed. 10 years is now living above 4%, and that's got to be bothersome. Even though that's a red candle, it was a positive session, but it closed below where it opened. I mentioned my timing signal is still green, and why? Because I require two things. On the weekly charts, I require the close to be above the 30-period um, weighted moving average, and I require the daily, excuse me, the the weekly bongo, these are weekly charts, so one time frame is a weekly bongo to be green. And we'll talk more about where this came from and how I use it. Probably more on Friday than Thursday at the Wealth 365 event. I only look at it after the market closes on Friday because the signal is a weekly signal. I will tell you the diamonds are, are again are at borderline areas but has not broken down and the same would be said about the Russell. Obviously, the Spiders and the NASDAQ, which have been leading, are looking even better. On the breadth side, there are certain things I'm going to look at. One I'm going to look at every day is Spiders and TLT. Why? Because if and when, and I think it's not an if, it's a when on recession, even if it's not in this next market in this cycle, there'll be a recession again. And you see during periods of recession, this is 2020, this is 2016. And if I could go back far enough and I got you 2008 and 2009, um, you'd see the same thing that the TLT spikes versus the spider. Well, if you look at where we're at today, there is absolutely no evidence of a spike. So I don't worry about the recession right now. RSP versus Spider. I told you that the big cap stocks were laggards this week. This is that proof. The RSP is outperforming the Spider on the daily chart here. If we look at the QQEs, not really any different than the Qs, but the angle of descent has changed, so maybe that's broadening out evidence there. This is an hourly chart of the more general XSD versus the SMH broadening out of the semis. This is IBD 50 stocks versus the FANGs. And boy, would I like to see this change. And I guess if I want to be, um, if I want to say that FANGs have picked up, are, are weakening, I could show you the descent. The more the descent favors the FANGs and now the sideways move. So maybe there's something to that. I like to look at the S&P sectors hourly. Um, and if you look at this, you could see a big improvement on materials at the end of the week. Communication on a longer term is strong. Energy picking up at the end of the week. Perhaps this is the weak dollar. Financials picking up at the end of the week. Industrials maintaining strong. Technology holding. And then defensive plays. Staples, no. Real estate seems to be picking up. Utilities really doing nothing. Healthcare really doing nothing. 
So if this market is ready to roll over, wouldn't I expect staples to be showing strength in utilities and real estate and healthcare? Well, only one of those four is showing anything. So that's an argument that we're not rolling over. And then we look at um, discretionary, which has really been leading. If I go into my scanners and we start with the heat map, you could see especially on big cap tech, it was a rough day. Microsoft down 1.21%, Meta just a bit. Same thing with Amazon. Um, NVIDIA up 0.93. Now, also just want to point out that um, this is, if there are aftermarket changes, they'll be reflected in the heat map. If we look at something like the NASDAQ 100, um, you could see mostly red, but if we look out at a broad thing, this may take a few seconds, the Russell 200, do you notice something different? Yeah, the broad-based Russell 200 here is very green. I like Wealth Scanner as my go-to tool to give me a sense of what's working right now in the market. And I just want to show you what, something that I have it set on very short-term time frames. Now, I show you that because you should say, but Jeff, you tell us you're not a day trader. Why are you looking at like day trader timeframes? Simple. I look at industry groups and sectors and markets like a Greyhound bus. Once they get moving, they move in the same direction for a long time. When they want to stop, they ha take some longer to stop. So by design or by not design, just by reality, these things move slower. So I want to look at them at shorter time frames to pick up a change in movement instead of relying on daily and weekly, which will take too long. So first thing I see is that um, nothing's above 800. Put a check in the market's weekend over, compared to the last couple of weeks. I think two weeks ago we had everything was above 800 on the top sheet. In fact, we're all the way down to 395 here. So this is clearly change and weakening of the market. Insurance with a flag, with a fire here is leading. And I saw a lot, especially the reinsurance plays looked interesting. I mentioned earlier that Bannock oil sectors, um, that OIH, especially the services side, looked strong. When bonds are leading, that's never good for the market or short the bonds are up there. IYR, real estate, gasoline, the dollar, oil producers, retail. Retail was about 800 a week ago. So this is clear weakening here, weakening here, and insurance and energy are the things that look interesting. Now, I am a top-down investor, and you know the beauty of this program is I'm still talking, so I'm much slower, but I've define what I think the markets are doing. And frankly, I would be very careful entering new positions until I sense what's happening, unless you are a very short term trader. I don't sense that this market is rolling over and I need to go short everything. But I did, partly through stops, reduce the number of my positions and raise cash this week because the market has weakened. And maybe tomorrow on for Tuesday, I say, oh, it's time to be short. Well, I don't know that. I don't have that crystal ball, but I have enough reduction in my conviction, even though my timing model still is long. So from a long term, from a top down investor, I am more looking for the market to go higher than go lower, but without much conviction. If I want to look at the where the market is working, I'm thinking, away from the big caps into the more um, to, to the stocks that make up and lead in the in the non cap weighted index. Um, and then I'm looking here at insurance and I'm looking at energy, especially services companies. Now, my cat scanner tool, which is only available during um, the Wealth 365 events and um, when I do special events for Rob and the Wealth Charts family. Um, this is the way that I make my life easy. If you have this tool and you, you're thinking to yourself, but Jeff, I don't have your scans up at the top. Um, I will remedy that 
after the Wealth 365 when I'm going to put out new workspaces um, for anybody that has my tools. Now, if you think I just said something mean, if you don't have my tools, well, the workspaces aren't going to help you because these require my tools. Um, the things that are not with my tools, I'm always happy to share. And one of the beautiful things about the Wealth 365 and the Wealth Charts community is the ability just by creating a link for you to have the same on your screen as I have mine, with the caveat is you have to actually own the the marketplace stuff that various folks will sell you to get access to them. So let's just look at all symbols. And I just want to go through my four or five favorite scans. And we're going to start with the first one is a pullback and an uptrend. So pullback and an uptrend requires to meet my price and volume. I like to trade options, so I'm only asking that they have options, <clears throat> which sometimes is just a, also a nice um, guarantee of liquidity. Um, stocks that don't have options are going to be less liquid, typically. I have to have at least one bullish dot. I have a dot for volume, a dot for gap, a dot for breakouts, and a dot for momentum. Very boring names. The more dots, the more excited I get because it tells me something is happening and it draws my eyes to the chart. That's my edge. I don't look at a thousand stocks every night. I look at five to ten and I find things that are actually moving. I'm looking for the pullback. So the bongo had to reverse direction within two weeks. The bongo is my trending indicator. So since this is a daily chart within the last two weeks, the daily trend had to go from a short-term bearish to bullish and I require both the daily bongo to be bullish and the weekly bongo to be bullish. So I'm going to get stocks that look like BABA. So let's look at BABA. So let's go over what I just said. I require the long-term trend to be bullish. Well, I'm just looking at the weekly trend and it ain't great. And one could certainly laugh at this being an uptrend, but my weekly bongo is green. Okay. It's only recently turned green. I expect require the daily bongo to have gone red and have reverted back to green within the last nine bars. My four dots tell me I had a gap on volume. I broke out of recent highs and I have momentum. This is a PSAI reversal. Three time frame bongos are green. Relative strength and OBV picked up. I think you have to be aware of all the China concerns and issues, but that is an interesting looking chart to me. And the reason why I like this chart so much, okay, is if I right click and let's bring up the data window. Where to go? I'll try that again. Okay, let's pin it. That data window tells me that my close was at 90.55. That 200, which would be a place I'd want to stay above, is at 88.33. The 50 is at 85. So if I'm willing to do as much as an 8% risk, which I'm not on this stock, I have some very logical places to put my stop. I might look at below the 200. I might look at below the low of the day. I might look at below the 50, depending on how much room I wanted to give this. But I have rational stops because the stock is not extended. So BABA would be one that made it to my watch list. All right, How, the next one, Castle Biosciences. Now, biosciences these days are stories. They are stories because the market does not like healthcare today. And frankly, the market does not like biotech. So what would drive a stock like that? Well, in a small biotech, it's not earnings because they don't make any money. When I see this pattern, it tells me that there was news. Do they have positive data? 
Do they have an approval? Do they get a bid to take over? So they had raises in um, from the brokers. That's always good. So I bet somewhere in here is news. Now, what I really like for news and earnings, and again, I know some people do not like it, so I'm, I am calling that out when I switch my platforms. And I get that, so um, for those people, I apologize. But let's just look at Castle Light. Was a CSTL? Oh, let's see, Castle Biosciences. And I'm forget the charts. There's too much here that will confuse you because I haven't talked about it. But let's just click that arrow. Uh, I'm getting the wrong thing there. All right, let's find it. <laughs> Move it away. That's what you do, Jeff. This is going to bring up, should bring up news. All right, I give up. What am I doing wrong? Hold on, let me kill something. Let me try another one, CSTL. If it doesn't work, I'm going to go back to, to Trade Station and just say I shouldn't be looking at too many things. But this should open up the news. There we go. So if I want to see more news, it's going to throw it here. Ah, jumps after reversal and coverage policy. So now Medicare is covering their test. Well, that's actually a really good piece of information to know. That's something that I could build upon. So that would tell me that this might be something to look at. Um, if you have a diagnostic test and Medicare goes from not covering it to covering it, you'll have a lot of back tests that you can bill for and the market will start to use your test more. So that's pretty cool. I should have known that. Now, the other thing I like about TradingView is if you hit the E or the you'll pull up the financials. It tells you about the company, dermatologic cancer company, provision of genomic information for physicians and patients. Uh, okay, so it tells me what to do with the skin cancer. I could look at projections of earnings. The stock doesn't make any money. Reported versus estimate. I can go out and look at the next several quarters. I can look at revenue growth over time. It's not giving me future revenue. That's probably because they don't report it. You can also actually, um, and we actually created an indicator for that, but that's you know for a different discussion but we have an indicator that my, I uh, actually call my partner in this product, Praveen, uh, created um, that will pop up an indicator that shows you earnings and revenue over time just to give you a chance on growth and some other fundamentals. But we'll talk about that at another webinar. So what did we learn? We learned that this is something that's interesting. So why did it get upgrades to $37 and $32? Um, because Medicare is covering their test, I, I now recognize who they are. Um, that's an interesting one that I maybe have to go back and revisit. Um, AMC Networks, hard for me to believe movie theaters, but you know, I, you look at what's working right now. Hotels have been working, airlines are working, cruise ships are working, so maybe people are starting to go to movies. So again, not my favorite stock, got to get above the 50. And then automobile parts, I saw that on my top-down review, AXL, breaking out above the 200, relative strength and OB look good. And again, notice the pattern, weekly bond goes green, and we had the recent pullback on the daily. This is called bottoms up, not tops down. Now, to me, it's a blend because if I was convinced the market was going lower, I wouldn't be looking at anything to the long side. The point of my scan is it's bringing up stocks that look like things that I want to look at. DXC technology, a little bit better of an uptrend, has cleared the moving averages. On volume, it's got breakout momentum, relative strength and OBV look good, and it's a lot easier to convince you that it's on a longer term uptrend. Again, it stubbed its toes. So I've required a specific pattern um, 
and we can see that pattern over and over. Here's OII. This is a oil services stock, and um, we're going to look at these before we go. But oil services, um, they all look like this. Schlumberger, Halliburton stocks. We're in a long-term downtrend. I think last week I may have mentioned some. They look better as well. But boy, they have big breakouts on Friday. Look at relative strength OBV, the dots coming out of a squeeze. OII is interesting. In fact, here's the OIH, the ETF for the sector. And you could see oil services look interesting. Second scan here that I like in order of my attractiveness is bottom poppers. And these are stocks that are going to be weekly is going to be red because they've been selling off, but their daily bond has gone green and they've got some momentum signals. So if you look at something like JD, am I ready to buy this? No, but a run from here to the 200 is pretty significant. Notice the daily bond will turn green. It had three dots, volume breakout and momentum. KWeb, another Asian stock, China ETF. Um, this one did marathon oil, um, big volume, the three dots, relative strength and OBV. So I will find stocks on this list. A lot of these are energy stocks that have been beaten up that look like energy is about to reverse. That's ConocoPhillips, Fang, pays a big dividend. Um, now, on all of these, I worry about that 200 overhead and how far they're going to go. But energy has been built, beat, beat up for some period of time, and this is an ERX um, energy ETF. So you notice on these bottom poppers, which are stocks that are beaten up, that are starting to move and have lots of my momentum signals and breakout signals coming in, energy is a big player there. Okay. How about runaway stocks? I call them rockets. Now, you'll see stocks show up on multiple scans. PLTK, Platika Holdings. This is to me as a rocket. Can I buy this? Well, it's kind of extended. Um, look how far it is. You know, it's 30%, 25% from its 200 day moving average. The high low jump is approaching 100. So I'm nervous it's getting extended, but, but what a beautiful pattern. Pull back to the 17, broke out. Don't like that it closed below it with a red candle, but it was up 4% on the day. Three green dots relative strength and OBV. Bosch and health companies kind of all over the place here. Um, but it came down to the moving averages and bounced with relative strength and OBV. Here is a airline that was beaten up, Hawaiian Air, that's breaking out. Um, you know, you look at this one and um, this one looks a lot easier to get into than Delta right now. But do you want to be in laggards now? I want to call out that the high jump is 100, but I don't care. Why? Because this stock is below the 200 and crossing above. So yes, short term, it's a little extended because it's had a big move up, but you're not extended if you're right at the 200 day moving average. So sometimes you have to look at the chart and make your opinion. Um, so these are stocks that are starting to run. Um, let me see anything else popped up from what I looked at over the weekend. You know, DraftKings is one that, you know, I, we saw this coming and it's just a, what a beautiful run. Is this viable up here? You know, it's giving you an entry. It's starting to go a little sideways, but, um, it's had a big move already. And that's why I call these my rockets. And then lastly, I'd be looking at stocks that I call my Momo up. They have to have dots. I don't care about anything else. And there you're going to see a lot of the stocks that we've been looking at. Helix is another one of these oil services companies. This, there's something going on here. So that is how I use those schemes to bring the best stocks up to the top. And then if I was more concerned that the market was going down, I can duplicate all these scans to the downside. And one thing I did notice when I looked at charts yesterday was there's a lot of healthcare stocks look weak. So Amgen's been weak for a while, but look at this in a downtrend, it ran up into the moving average and failed. So what do we have here? We have 
a stock in a downtrend, retracing here and failing, and here and failing, which is why you went to a green on the daily bongo, so the opposite of the pullback, breaking down here with relative strength and OBV weak. That's on my list to watch for shorts. Gilead is another pharma stock breaking down as well. Um, even stocks that I love because of what they do, Novo Novo Disc makes, um, uh, that's not what it is. Novo, no, Novo, let's see, Novo, here it is, NVO. This is one that makes one of the weight loss remedies. Um, you know, it hasn't broke down, but it failed here at the 17. And even Lilly, which has been such a leader that we gave you before it went to 400, you know, it's going to be, it, it looks to me like it wants to at least come down to the 50. And it's broke down a little bit. So I can use my scans to find stocks that are breaking down. America State's water um, coming out of a squeeze, breaking down three red dots, relative strength and OBV. Uh, Procter & Gamble, one of these um, consumer staple stocks, which probably wouldn't be shorting this one since it's right above the 200-day moving average but failing at the 50, which tells me it's likely to come down to that 200. Um, anything else here that looked interesting? Here's another consumer staple stock. And this is one I wouldn't short either because you'd expect it to bounce at the 200. The point that I'm trying to make is I use my scans to find stocks that have behaviors that I like. Now, I just want to finish by going back to my pullbacks and uptrends. And let's go into energy, oil, gas, and coal. And let's see if anything comes up to the top. So you are going to see a number of things. If you look at it, Baker Hughes, here's another oil services. You notice that pattern? Um, CLB, another oil services, not quite as runaway, but a big move on Friday. C Cotera, I don't think it's services, I think it's a producer. So the producers look different than the um, than the services. That's another producer. Now then you have the MLPs, which are also running. This is um, N-Link midstream. Now these guys pay a big dividend, or at least several of them do. EOG, which is a gas producer as well as oil. Um, I like to see it get above the 200. Um, LBRT is another services, boom. Halliburton is one of the two big boys of services, boom. Um, the other one is Schlumberger, SLB, boom. Something's going on with services stocks. So the other thing that we said was strong, let me go back to WealthScan, what was it? Insurance. So I also could build a director of insurance and see if anything in insurance has given me an opportunity to get into it. Um, nobody with lots of dots. Let's take a look at um, Aflac. Why does it not have lots of dots? Because it's already started running. Um, not too late necessary. AIG, this one looks great, but again, it's already been running. CNO, not so great. Let's look at just plain old Momo and see if anything here has got going to come up to the top. Lincoln National, Ryan Specialty, ACGL. This is the one I wanted to show you. ACGL, sort of a cup, handle, getting ready to break out. Relative strength and OB look good. The problem with this method that I'm showing you is you got to look every day, which of course you look every day because... The, the best time to buy this could have been a couple days ago, but this one I think is really setting up ACGL. So hope you like that. I would love to hear comments. I'm going to teach you about my dots. I'm going to teach you about my timing signal. I will share you the workspaces as requested that don't have um, proprietary indicators in. Why? Because unless you have them, they won't work for you, and then you'll be mad at me because your charts don't look like mine. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome rest of the weekend. I did this early for you, Kathy, and we'll see you all um, next week. Don't forget, 
hit the like, subscribe, and um, sign up for Wealth Charts or Wealth 365.